So one of the funny things that, again, I probably shouldn't share is, I know some of the folks that are working on Inbox once upon a time, um, because you guys have been working on iterations of this, which is why the product does so much right now. And there were a lot of jabs at this company, some of which were directed by me. And I happened to have sat across from one of the designers on your team for two years, because we worked at the same space for a while. And he pointed out, he's like, yeah, there's those jabs, but we actually did that first. They just released it first. Yep. So a lot of these ideas, I don't want to say they came out of Gmail or they came out of whatever, but you guys have been innovating on this stuff for so long, which is why this is such, such big news that we're so excited about. So Shalini here, this is her, it's your second year uh, yep. at Inbox Love. Last year you talked about uh, actions in Inbox, right? Exactly. Schema.org. Um, how many of you guys already have Inbox? Okay. Well. Hopefully, you're going to find a way that everybody gets their, their hand raised later. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool, cool. I'm gonna, actually, how many of you don't have Inbox because you are using an apps account? Well, okay, so it's mostly most people don't have invites, right? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll we're going to we'll, make them feel special. Yes, we'll, we'll try and do something about that. Cool. Well, so. I don't need to say anymore. We're really excited to hear from you. Thank you so much, Shalini. Awesome. Thanks, Jared. So I'm really happy to be here, as Jared said, for the second year in a row. Um, and. Uh, I'm Shalini, I'm a product manager on Gmail and Inbox. You got it, uh, you're good. Um, and I'm really excited to be here today. Jared took away my first question, which was how many of you played with the app? So we will do a quick demo today, which will be uh, hopefully pretty useful. There we go. So, you know, I've been on the Gmail team for the last three years, and over the course of time, just like many of you, I've gotten to know how users use their email and the problems they have. And Inbox has been a two-year effort to draw, try and address some of those problems. And as you'll see shortly, it's quite different than Gmail. And for us, that's actually the point, because the world is different. So today, I want to spend the next 20 minutes talking about three things. First, why we built Inbox and why we felt that we had to start from scratch. Second, what Inbox is, what it does, the five key features. And third, really it's you guys, right? You know, Inbox is very different and we wanna make sure that developers and marketers understand it, get the most out of it, and we start a conversation on how to work together. So uh, the first is why. Uh, when, we, when we started this two-year journey, Sorry, I apologize because it's been a very busy week, so I'm gonna look at my notes just to make sure. But uh, given that we're at an email conference, everyone's kind of biased here, right? Everyone likes email. Everyone thinks email is great. But two years ago when we sat down and started thinking about this project, we really, we really realized that since Gmail launched in the last 10 years, the entire world has changed, right? So not only has the world changed, but email has changed. Just to put it into perspective, in 2004, when Gmail launched, the iPhone was still three years away. Think about the world before iPhones and Android phones. It was different. And so, you know, today you still get email from your friends and family, but you also get email for pretty much everything that you do. If you took a ride to the conference today and paid for it via an app, then you probably have an email receipt for that ride in your inbox. So there's a lot of email happening across the world, and people are trying to manage their lives through this inbox, but it's hard. So when we started to work on inbox two years ago, we thought about what is it that makes this so hard? Why is it hard to manage email? So the first reason, as many of us are aware, is email volume, right? Like if I look at my inbox today, if you look at it, you'll, find, you'll see pictures of my niece, you'll see bills that I need to pay, you'll see my travel itineraries, uh, you know, information about the Giants game tonight, lots of different things that I need to manage and deal with. So when we started this project, we took this crazy screenshot of one of our teammates' personal accounts. And this is all the email that they received in just one day. Obviously, it doesn't fit on one screen, so we extended the Chromebook, because that's the obvious answer. So you really need, you know, we need something to deal with this problem of email volume. Now, look at each one of these emails. Inside each one of these emails, there is information buried inside. So, for example, I ordered a Halloween costume, and today's Wednesday, Halloween's Friday, my costume hasn't arrived. So now I need to figure out where it is, when it's coming. So I need to go find that email I need to, that has the receipt in it, scan over a bunch of text, jump over a bunch of legalese, find the link I'm looking for, click on it, and maybe even log in. That's a lot of work 
just to find out when my package is arriving. And not only that, it's, it's different now, right? 10 years ago, mobile phones were not the predominant way to access your email, but now it really is. So you need to do all of that song and dance on a small phone. Mobile technology is awesome. It's made our lives so much easier. But at the same time, it's exacerbated these types of problems. So in addition to email volume and buried information, there's a third problem, and that's every single email in your, in your inbox is from a person that's asking you to do something, asking you to look at something. But what about all the things that you need to do that are not being asked of you by other people? What about those? Those should also be in your inbox. So, you know, we do a lot of research. We go to people's homes. We talk to them about how they manage their lives. And we often see things like this. People are putting post-it notes on their computers, on their monitors, even on their phones sometimes. And that's because they know they're going to come back to these places. They need to remember the things that they need to do that are not in their inbox. So we really wanted to you know, think about what it is what's hap with, that's happening with email. People are getting a lot of email. They're trying to find information in it. And they're, getting, they're struggling with dealing with their inboxes. On top of that, as they deal with their inboxes, they feel like they're getting distracted from these things, these things on post-it notes that they need to do. So we wanted to address that too in inbox. So with these problems in mind, volume, buried information, and to-dos on post-it notes, we really thought that we had to make more of a fundamental change when we started Inbox. We wanted to start from scratch. We wanted to build something new that really addressed the problems of today's world, not you know, at today's world and the next 10 years, not just the problems that existed in 2004 when Gmail first launched. So we came up with Inbox. It's very different than Gmail. And that's the point. So that's why. That's why we decided to start from scratch, why we decided to build Inbox. Let's talk about some of the features that are inside Inbox. And to do that, I'm going to do a demo. So uh, bear with me here. First of all, also Inbox is launched on all three platforms, iOS, mobile, uh, Android, and web. I'm going to switch over here. It's a bit of a hack, but hopefully it'll work. Right. Can everyone see? All right. So the first, pro the first thing that you'll notice about Inbox is that it's no longer just a wall of text. There's a bunch of photos here. As you scroll down, there's bundles. There's you know this article that someone sent me about Stephen Colbert. There's my flight information. There's my purchase information. All of this stuff is right here at the top of my inbox, available on my phone, visible at a glance. I can tap into photos and scroll through them without even opening the email if I want. I've got, you know, I've got my travel information. So this, this email uh, with my flight has all the pertinent details. It has my date, time. Um, it also has, not only does it have the information that's inside the email, visible at a glance, it also goes out to the web and gets more information. So it'll tell you if your, time is, your flight's on time or delayed. It'll tell you the terminal and gate information, and it'll keep it up to date. So we call this highlights. And we really want to highlight the key information that's inside that email uh, at, right at the top level. So there's no more hunting and pecking for information. There's no more you know, 10 steps to try and find what you need. We do the same thing for purchases as well. We have all the key information right here available at your fingertips. So that's the first one, highlights. The second feature is bundles. So as you probably have noticed, I have, you know, Inbox has already organized and auto-categorized emails for me. So I have my promotions, I have social, I have travel, I have purchases. The idea here along highlights and bundles is for Inbox to do the heavy lifting for you, right? Instead of you having to manage your mail, we want to group things in ways so you can manage groups of mails quickly together in, in ways that you don't have to go and categorize this mail yourself or find the pertinent details. So my favorite thing about bundles is the promotions bundle. So as you can see here, I, uh, there are 12 emails inside of here. I can quickly open it 
there's definitely a couple of valuable ones in here. There was one specific one, which is the shelving, because I definitely need to buy that. So in, I can quickly keep that one in my inbox and with one tap, sweep the rest away. So in just a few seconds, I managed 12 emails, kept the ones I wanted, and got rid of the rest. It's really fast, it's really efficient. So bundles and highlights work really t well together. For promotional mail, for travel, for example, I no longer have to open you know, my travel cluster or my purchases bundle because I get all the information up here and I can swipe it away because I'm done. I just confirm that these things are on their way or the prices and I'm done. So that's bundles and highlights. The third feature, and, and those, are, those are really meant to address uh, the email volume problem and the buried information problem. The third feature is the reminders. So now, now we're talking about the post-it notes that you saw on the computer. Reminders are really about making sure that the things that you need to remember are in your inbox, available to you all times on all devices. So let's take an example. I need to go ahead and uh, call, I need to go ahead actually and buy tickets for, my, uh, for the holidays. I have not bought my flight home. So I'm gonna go ahead and say buy flight home. And there it is. Now. That reminder is at the top of my inbox, and I, I won't forget about it. But it's pretty, you know, it's pretty busy today. I'm at this conference. Tonight's a Giants game, so I really don't want to do this today. We've already talked, we've heard, already heard about snooze earlier today. So with one sweep, I can go ahead and say, take, let me take care of this when I get home. There it is. Now, it's not in my face. I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the day, but I can be sure that when I get home, I can be sure that when I get home, my phone will buzz and it'll be right there at the top of my inbox waiting for me. So that's the third feature, uh, reminders and the fourth feature, snooze. So the fifth one is assist. If I want to add one more reminder, which is to call Comcast. So, you know, I have, I'm having some trouble with my internet, I wanna call Comcast. What's really cool is you'll notice that as I was typing, inbox is giving me autocompletes along the way, which means that it helps me to capture these reminders much more quickly. And if I select Comcast, it'll actually give me all sorts of information. It'll give me a quick button to tap and call them. It'll give me their phone number in case I need that. And it'll also tell me if it's open or closed or what time, if it's closed, what time it'll be open. We call that assist because it really helps the user nudge them in taking the first step. And and assisting them as far as we can along the way with information from the web. So assist is something that you know, we're really actively working on. We have a bunch of really cool ones. We have you know, calling friends and family, obviously calling businesses. Uh, renew, if you say renew your driver's license, you'll get the right link for your state. If you say return this item that I ordered, you'll find you, it'll give you a beautiful chip of what it is you ordered and also tell you how many days you have to return it. So we're really trying to assist users as much as possible, and we're actively adding more and more assists as we, you know, as we go along. So that's, those are the five features that I really wanted to talk about today. Let's see here. Those are the five features that I really wanted to talk about today, and we're really excited about you know, about the feature. As you can see, this is very different than Gmail. Gmail, it, and it's solving a different problem. It's solving the problem of email overload, of buried information, and of post-it notes um, as your to-dos. So we're really excited about the feature, and Inbox is different. It's about doing the heavy lifting for you. Um, now it's the third, now it's time for the third uh, one, which is probably the one you've been wondering, is the developer platform. So we really want to make sure, this is just the beginning. It's, a, it's been a, you know, a process to get here, and we really want to build the inbox for the next 10 years, and we want to work with all of you to do that. So the basic tools that we already have, which are you know, the IMAP and the Gmail API, those things are here to stay. Um, you'll find that the things that you can already do will be reflected in the inbox. So for example, if you were to add a label to your inbox I mean, via the Gmail API, it'll show in Gmail and it'll also show in inbox. 
If you add, you know, uh, Jared mentioned email markup. I was here last year talking about email markup. And if you add email markup to your emails, they're only going to be enriched with the new highlights feature in Inbox. So they'll not only show as actions in Gmail, they'll not only show in Google Now, but now they'll also show in Inbox. And thirdly, you'll notice that there's a bunch of new patterns and features in Inbox that weren't there in Gmail, like bundles and reminders and snooze and assist. And we really want to turn these into developer platform. We want to work with you guys to figure out what the best way is to move forward and to work together so that we can make the best experience for all of our users. So actually, I really would like to hear ideas that people have, and John's here as well, um, to, you know, to hear those ideas and figure out how we can do more together and you know, make Inbox truly a platform. That's it? Yeah? So just to be clear, is, uh, is Inbox a replacement for Gmail, or are these like two parallel products that you plan on maintaining? Good question. Uh, so we are the Gmail team, and we are actively working on Gmail. So we will continue to do so. You can imagine over time that, uh, you know, our hope is that over time, Inbox is the future. But first, we have to see how users like it, how it's adopted, and make sure that it's working for people. So we are actively working on Gmail, and we will continue to do so. And it will be the bulk of our users for some time. And there are a lot of features that are what we call power user features. Um, so they're features that are used by a very small subset and a very, very passionate subset of the Gmail user yes. base about that particular feature. Okay, so one of the things we didn't want to do was to say, well, we can't bring out Inbox until it has all of those features because somebody's really going to want that feature. So instead, we said, since Inbox is something new, let's let it have its own life and let's have the feature evolution of Inbox be driven by user feedback on Inbox, rather than be driven by the total feature set that already existed in Gmail. So um, you know, as we see what, what people want and what, what comes up and how usage patterns evolve with Inbox, that's what's going to drive the future. Yeah, as, as I talk to lots of startups that are trying to make different types of email clients, I often have to explain to them about the challenge of trying to make an email client to rule them all. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to work for everybody yes. and everything. And uh, so I think that's pretty smart. Other questions, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, I was just curious if you can uh, use Inbox to access other mail accounts like Yahoo or AOL or what have you. Right now, it's just Gmail. Okay. Now, another obvious question would be, when do we get Google Apps? Yeah, um, so it's definitely something we want to do and we're working on. Obviously, there's some more complexity around there, but it's something we are working on. Yes. This is Justin. I'm, I'm sure you know what yep. I'm going to ask. Um, <laughs> Please. Um, I've, I've used um, Inbox, and it's really cool. And yeah. as you said, the experience is really nice. Um, but as email senders, uh, we want to have the best experience in mobile also. So in, to do that, we send emails with media queries to make it mobile responsive. I noticed that uh, Inbox doesn't support that. And I also, I also understand that even the regular Gmail email client doesn't support that. The Android does. My question here is, is this something that you know, you th that's, you're going to support soon, or there's a reason uh, why you know, that support is not in there? So, sorry, media queries? Yeah, so uh, style block. So right now you guys don't support uh, basically a, a style block where we can put a media query. Right. So that when an email is, is, is rendered in a mobile uh, uh, client, it, it sort of makes it readable versus right. squished in. Right. So. Um, that's definitely something that, you know, I don't have a great answer for you at this moment. Maybe John has a better answer. Yeah, so this is something that um, we definitely want to do. Uh, it's... Uh, um, we made a change uh, just over a year ago where we started proxying images so that we can s display images by default without leaking personal identification. Uh, and uh, one of those things was the user agent, right? So, so a byproduct of that was that senders could no longer have differentially formatted email uh, for the client. Um, that wasn't the intended effect, uh, but it's, you know, it's a trade-off we'd still make. Supporting media queries is something we're really looking at, and I'm sure there are a lot, I know there are lots of people in this room that want it because they've already asked me. Um, so it's, uh, the more that you ask me, uh, the more likely it is to happen. So just come up and, you know, send me a plus one, okay? 
Yeah, uh, Leah, was a show of hands, who would like media queries? Yay. Better support, yeah. okay. Yeah, I was actually in a meeting earlier today to figure out how to do that, so. No commitments at this point, but it's something we're definitely looking at. It's definitely, it's definitely a priority, right? I mean, I have the same problem in my own inbox, so uh, we definitely want to fix it. Time for one more question. Yeah, hi there. Um, I guess I'm really curious what your, I know it's kind of experimentation, experimentation stage and take what works to the next level and evolve it, but like, what are your first and second like short-term Teams user goals for, yeah. for 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 actual like numbers of your user base because it's such a big base it's hard to work. So uh, uh, I can't unfortunately I can't share specific numbers obviously but I mean I think our goals are the following right we want we want to get you know users on it happy using it we want to make sure that the users that are trying it are happy with it and if they're not we want to address the feedback um, you know you could imagine that if we had launched without an invite system. And maybe you know, there's things that are still there's things that are still missing. Frankly, like we don't have real tablet apps out yet. So we're now we're working very hard on those. It doesn't work for Google Apps for Business. We're getting feedback that we need to address. So we want to sort of manage the growth slowly, just to make sure that we address that feedback along the way, and then open it up so that you know more and more users can get it. But if we opened it up to all users right away, then maybe they wouldn't have. Um, maybe it wouldn't be, you know, frankly, as successful. So we want to make sure we manage the growth, and we're going to look at all those things. If, you know, we will, we, we do want to grow, we want as many users on it as possible, but we just want to make sure we do it in a, you know, in a balanced way. Great. Well, thanks so much for sharing that with us. It's obviously a hot topic. People really appreciate getting a direct line uh, to Google and others to get some of this feedback, and so uh, it's really valuable to have you here explaining it today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to say one more thing. I was quite serious about wanting to turn this into you know, more and more of a developer platform, so if you have ideas on how you want to work with some of this new stuff, I do want to hear it. Awesome. So. You'll be around after the talk? Yeah, I'll be around. Awesome. Thank you. During Great. the Giants game, Thank right? Thank you. <laughs>